An hour before midnight on a rainy October night, a penniless band of monks landed on a wharf in Portland. They were the first Benedictines on the west coast of America. In 1882, they built a monastery at the foot of a remote forested mountain and named it Mount Angel after their monastery in Switzerland. Five years after the pioneer monks arrived, they founded Mount Angel College, and in 1889 they established a seminary. Five seminarians showed up that first year for classes, studying everything from theology and astronomy to Latin and Gregorian chant, and soon the numbers grew. In 1892, tragedy struck when a small kitchen fire grew into an inferno that destroyed the monastery, church, and seminary. With heavy hearts, the monks began raising money to rebuild. Supporters of the young seminary rallied to make sure the school survived. And on Christmas Eve in 1903, the community moved into its new monastery, college, and seminary. One student wrote, I remember very well my first sight of the college building late one September evening after my brother and myself had made our way up the hill. The sight of the monastery, all alight and surmounted by the brilliant cross, emerging suddenly from the wood, will remain with me forever. By 1926, the college had just achieved its first accreditation and enrollment had reached a new high. But tragedy struck again when a fire destroyed the monastery and seminary for the second time. All that was left were smoldering ruins. And in despair, the monks made plans to send 200 students home. But Mount Angel survived. Townspeople opened their homes for makeshift classes and living quarters, and sisters at the nearby Queen of Angels Monastery prepared meals. Donations poured in. That same year, another monastery and seminary began rising from the ashes. It would be dedicated the following year. In 1951, Abbot Gregory Dewar entered Mount Angel at age 14. The hilltop for him became a place of encounters with God. Father Pascal entered at the same time. I was a shy kid from southern Idaho when I came to Mount Angel. My student years here were a time of growing, growing intellectually, socially, and spiritually. When we in my class were ordained in 1964, we not only had a good college and theological education, but we also had a deep, abiding faith. We were scared but we were ready. My formation here at Mount Angel was one of the greatest blessings of my life. A student from 1960 wrote about what seminary life means. It is very strange sometimes to hear what made different men come to the seminary. Some folks wanted to be priests ever since they can remember. Others came to the seminary on a whim. Some of those who came without thinking stayed to think harder. The only way to know if God is calling is to answer and see. This year, we celebrate the 125th anniversary of Mount Angel Seminary. Over the years, much has changed, but much has endured. Founded by a humble group of immigrant monks in another age, Mount Angel is now the oldest and largest seminary in the western United States. By God's grace and with the help of friends and supporters, we have not only survived our challenges, we have thrived. Working together, we have helped fulfill a critical need for priests to serve the people of God with the mind and heart of Jesus Christ himself. This school of the Lord's service is run by a Benedictine abbey located in one of the most secular states in the nation. It has provided wholehearted, spiritually mature priests for many of the dioceses in the nation and even provides priests to serve in other countries around the world. In 
In the Lord's Prayer, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Those words, thy will be done, are really crucial. The choices I'm making now are bigger than me. If, if you believe in something, uh, and you believe it to be true, I mean, you, you gotta give yourself to it. Father Lauro Minimo from the Diocese of San Diego graduated from the theology program last year. Speaking at his commencement ceremony, he encouraged his peers to be that bridge to Christ to set the world on fire with God's love. It is true that we are never the same as when we first came here, he said. But in another respect, we leave here as we came, hopeful, excited, still eager, still smiling, united together in Jesus Christ. Millions of lives have been touched by what happens on this holy hilltop, and millions more will be touched by your generous support. Thank you for joining us as partners in this holy mission. Relying on God's grace, we look forward to the next 125 years together. Our work has only just begun.